TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen just in case because it's been getting real negative lately. Um, don't forget we are on twitch.com. Username's at the bottom of the screen. Catch the lives. And we also got Patreon where we post five days per week. But this is Camp Pay Will Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 13. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. High housing costs are a major area of concern for most families. With rents expected to rise faster than house prices in the next five years, recent research has revealed that one in three families in England couldn't pay their rent or mortgage for more than a month if they lost their job. Forty-four percent of working families in England cut back on buying essential food and clothing in order to pay their rent and mortgage. No cap. Y'all see me? I be wearing the same stuff. <laughs> ah, talk to me. I get it. High Court enforcement agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in Penge, South East London, to collect a large debt of forty-seven thousand pounds from Mr. Austin Oke. London traffic. It's just down here, apparently. Mr. Oke failed to pay a former landlord any rent for three years. His landlord escalated... For three years? The landlord is bold for letting Bruddy stay in there for three years, no rent paid. That is insane. If I didn't have to pay rent for three years, I'd be rich. ...did the case to the High Court, and now Mr. Oke must pay today. The landlord was too nice. Just on the corner. But just as Gary and Connor arrive at the address, they spot a car about to leave. It's that one there, he's leaving. Is that him? That might be him. Have a word. Gary quickly gets out to go and speak to the driver. Hello, Austin. Austin Oakey? Yes. Hi there, uh, my name's Gary Brown. Yeah, Mr. Austin Oakey was taking a piss. He he jumped out clean in the mud, didn't he? Look at him. I'm a high court enforcement agent. Dapper down. Austin. That's what I just said. Are you Austin Oki? He said no, yes. You you are asking me a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Austin Oki. No. Okay. What's your name, sir? My name is Mr. Olufukayoke. Right. Okay. After answering to the debtor's name, Austin Oke, the man seems to have changed his story. Thorough background checks carried out prior to enforcement have confirmed Mr. Oke is resident at this address. Gary investigates further. Okay, can I speak to Austin Oki, please? I don't know if he's around here. Okay, who is he to you? Is he a family member or? Is he a family member? Yeah. Yeah, he's a known person. He's a known person? Yes. How is he known to you? He's a known individual. Okay, have you got some ID, please, sir? I don't have an ID here. You need to show me who you are. My name is Olufi Kayok, I just told you. But Gary is now suspicious. He could be the debtor they're looking for. Definitely is. But the man seems eager to leave. Put a clamp on a car. Yeah, put a clamp on it, mate. Connor acts quickly. Can I see some ID, please? I do not have any ID. I don't always believe everything everybody tells me. In fact, it's quite rare that I believe. I feel like that's risky, putting a clamp on a car while he's in it. If things on face value, he could have got I'll assist his... on evidence, and I will keep the pressure on until I get it. I think it's him. I think it is the man we're looking for. Because um, he's very cagey about showing us any ID or anything like that. I mean, he had a wallet in the car, but he doesn't have any ID on him, so I think it's him. Gary and Connor have been outside the house for nearly 10 minutes. 
when suddenly the man makes an unexpected move. Bro, from the wall? You need to deal with this, sir. With the man gone, and with no evidence he isn't Mr. Oke, they decide to look into seizing the clamped car. Yeah, HBI check. But first, they. I bet you they didn't. I bet you he ain't know they could do that. Have to check whether it's free of finance. Hello, mate. There is a Nissan Note parked on the driveway. Delta November 59. It's All not right. free of finance. Cheers, mate. Cars on finance. The car can't be seized, and with no debtor to negotiate with, Gary and Connor are forced to walk away empty-handed for now. It's a bit annoying. Oh, so that's all you gotta do. That's the trick, huh? Just walk away. Just go outside and walk away. Lock all your doors. One little bit of leverage we had, and now we can't use it, so it puts us in a weaker position. Gonna awesome, he's not here, so then we, we have... We got nothing. It's almost as if we, we turn up, he's not in. But with a £47,000 debt to collect, they won't oh. give up easily. Yeah, they're going to catch money. By the end of this episode. I hope the next day, right now, huh? At night. It's 6 a.m. Gary and Connor are on their way back to the address they've been given for debtor Mr. Oke. Oh, this is going to be negative. I'm surprised if he doesn't even answer the door. With an early morning visit, they hope to catch the man they fully suspect to be Mr. Oke at home. Gotta try. Gotta try, man. Gary and Connor need to get inside the house to establish the man's identity and to resolve this case once and for all. Well, the top floor lights are on, mate. Doorbells in the UK? Can you come to the door, please? They're clearly in. Something at the window. Can you come to the door, please? Can you come and speak to us, please? All I want to do is speak to you. I'm not seeing you. I need my door. Give me camera. Let me record this weekend. I'm not, I don't give me a camera. Let me record it. This isn't going to go away just because you decide not to open the door. If you come here and bang my door again, if you are getting in trouble. That'd be your worst mistake. If you call the police on them right now, you're going to have to open that door to speak to the police. And they're going to walk right in behind them. Stop banging on my door. I do not know you. I don't know where you come from. Well, if you come and speak to me, I'll tell you where I'm coming from. End of story. With the man refusing to talk, will Gary and Connor ever get this £47,000 debt resolved? You know, he on business. He came to the, he came to the door with an iPad to record. Tough. Gary and what he said the door to answer the door. Now, Gary and Connor need to find a way to reason with the man. They say he might be a killer or something. Apparently so, yeah. This time, the man's wife comes to speak with Gary. It's not who you, you are looking he is. You know he is. I know he is. He knows he is. She too denies that her husband is the debtor, Mr. She Ocke. She's going to be on the same page. This isn't going to go away just because he refuses to talk to me. A lot of times people will speak to us through windows, um, speak to us on the end of a phone, they won't open the door because they think we're just gonna barge in and, and remove goods. They don't realize that we're actually there to help in some cases, and they perhaps don't wanna take that risk. <sighs> it's not gonna lie, at $47,000, I don't think I'll be opening no doors. Looking unlikely that they will get it's into the house. Good, but then the man's wife opens the door. What's to talk to him? I want to talk to him. That's yes, all I want to do. Gary now has access to the porch. 
But the man is still barring the way into the house. You, no, you want to barge into my... No, I don't want to barge anywhere. Do you want to open the door? Yeah, if you come in either way, I'm not going to see you. Are you going to hold me to see you? Hold on. Stay away. Let me just talk to him. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. But as soon, they for a walk, smooth in. as soon as the woman opens the door, her husband tries to force it closed again. Sir, you're you obstructing me from doing my job. I'm doing this to maintain a line of communication between me and you. If you close the door, that communication is gone. Hey, get one in. Open the door. Yeah, I'm listening to you. Okay. This debt is £47,000. Yes. I don't expect you to raise all of that. But we need to come to a resolution today of getting okay. this sorted out. If you <laughs> bro, mid shave, you can't even get his shave off. That's tough. You want to come in? Go right in and come in. Oh, yeah, he in now. So the debt is £47,354.05. If you can pay £20,000 today, then. 20000 I will get the client to agree a monthly payment for the remaining £27,000. I don't have £20,000 to pay. To then. Do you want to make some phone calls and see if somebody can help? No, I don't have. Because if yeah, you don't just, make any efforts, yes. we will remove goods from the property. If you want to remove goods, go ahead and remove goods. I do not have £20,000 to pay. I don't have such money. I can pay you 1000 at a later time uh, uh, this week, during this week, but I do not have 20000 I don't. I don't even have 1000 now. It's now clear that the man is taking responsibility for the debt. So you just... Confirming Gary's suspicion that he is Mr. Oke, the man named on the writ. Okay, I'm going to have a look around the property, okay, and see what goods are here. As Mr. Oke says he can't settle the debt, the writ commands Gary to look around the house for any goods of value yeah, that flat could screen, be seized. Flat surround sound. Is it safe in there? Is it? There's nothing in there. Oh. Empty safe. There doesn't appear to be anything worth removing. So Gary heads upstairs to discuss the case further with Mr. Oki. Boston, why did this debt come about? What do you owe she the money? She was sick. She was sick for, a, for more than a year. She well, was hospitalized that's... and I was not working. How much was your rent? 1,000. 1,000. They've taken you to court for over 40,000 like... pounds. That's a year, that's three and a half years no. rent. No. But you work, you work. She just got back to work. No, you work. I don't work. So I'm, where were you going yesterday in a suit then? I was going to my school. I'm, I'm a student. I work. I, 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 I school. Despite Mr. Oke's claims that family circumstances have led to his massive debt, Gary is duty bound to reclaim at least some of the money today. You need to raise some money. Austin, this debt is huge. Can you get £5,000 today? No, and, I don't. Uh, what I know I can do is, if I start off mm -hmm. with a payment by Friday. By How Friday, much though? How much? I will try to improve more than a thousand. How That's much would you lot. pay the month after? Can we say a thousand? It's not because looking good, it's bro. Because it's going to take four years. So paying a thousand pound a month is going to take four years to pay this no, debt. We can't do more than that, but. We can only promise one we know we are going to be able to keep at. Gary calls the office to see whether a down payment of a thousand pounds in a few days time, together with a payment plan, is acceptable. Yeah, this is a this is ugly. You this is a re these are regular law but these not law abiding, these are regular civilians. Not like business owners that she going into asking for this is private landlord. If I was a private landlord, no cap, I would want my 47 too. I don't care. He's saying he can't pay anything. All he can manage to pay is a thousand pound a month. No down payment anything at all. He can't pay anything today, he's saying. There's no goods here worth removing. I'll give him till Friday to pay a thousand pound. Um, and then it'll be a thousand pound a month. Okay. But if you can pass it on to the clients, we've yeah. been here for nearly two hours and it's just not its not getting any better than that. Thanks, John. Cheers, mate. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye. The offer has been accepted. And I feel no sorry choice. for the client because I wish there was more I could do. I really do. Um, but unfortunately, if a debtor owes a large amount of money and they have no goods, there's there's no re nowhere else to go with it, really. The case is resolved for now. But if Mr. Oke doesn't stick to his payment plan, 
Gary and Connor will be back. Thank you for your compliance, eventually. Hopefully we won't need to meet again. Yeah. Have a nice day. Take care. Onwards to the next one. Yep. Hopefully he sticks to the payments. That man not sticking Nearly to the payments. Nearly 80,000 county court. 100% guaranteed <laughs> he's going to... The first payment he won't have. Judgments yeah. were issued against businesses in England and Wales in 2016. Their average value is on the rise and last year exceeded three and a half thousand pounds. The total value of county court judgment issued against businesses in England and Wales is in 2016, 278 million. Knightsbridge, West London. This is what you get when you're around Harrods. Yeah. We don't want to get out of there in a hurry, are we? High Court enforcement yeah. agents Del Anglin and Max Carraher are on their way to collect a debt from a beauty company, Amber Therapy Suites Limited, on behalf of a disgruntled ex-employee. We're looking to collect a total of £10,314.78. The business is run from a shared commercial unit. So Dell and Max go inside to look for the owner of the debtor company. Hello, sir. I'm here for Amber Therapy Suite Limited. Doesn't look like you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a massage if that's what you want. I'm all right, thanks. Do you know Amber Therapy? I've heard of um, Amber Beauty, but not Amber Therapy Suite okay. Limited. Are they here? Where do they operate out? In a treatment room at the back. back. The owners of the gym are not connected to the debtor company, but it seems a business of a similar name to the debtors rents a room at the address. Max needs to investigate further. Who's the person who works in here? Uh, so, the level people go to to not pay is crazy. The owner, Renata, is not on the premises, so Dell asked to speak to a member of staff. This is Martin, who's, uh, Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Can we speak to you in, in your office? Yeah, sure. Please. But then suddenly, Dell receives a phone call from an unknown number. Hello? Who are you? Who am I speaking to? Sorry. Well, I'm no sorry. One. If you're not prepared to tell me who you are, I'm just going to hang up, OK? Yeah. Just a moment, Renata. Just bear with me a moment. Now, I've got a High Court writ of control to collect an amount of £10,314.78. Okay, we understand that yeah. you are the owner of the company called. I'm not the owner. I don't have any company at all. No. Kind of misunderstanding. Then why have you phoned me then? If right. That's the case, because I've been informed that you are. Why are you on the phone? The owner. I'm only the manager. Do, do you know? Um, you, you do. Hello, hello. While Dell mm. continues to question Renata, I ain't seen Dell in a minute. for clues head. as to who is really running the salon and find some paperwork. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Let me just read I'm it. a therapy suite. Oh. Bingo. This is checkmate for them. It's a sales document in the name of the debtor company, Amber Therapy Suites Limited. All right. Because we're, we're like a dog with a bone, aren't we, Max? You know why she's panicking? Why? Because she's been called. Just because we get to a property and there's a different company operating there, doesn't mean that we're just going to walk away. One clue can change a case. If you find something linking all of the assets in a business to a defaulter company, that can be a game changer. We're good to enforce and we know exactly what assets there are. The agents have the evidence they mm. need Do to look continue like it's enforcing the writ here? here today. Renata is now on her way to the salon. While they wait for her to arrive, the agents start an inventory of goods they could seize if the debt isn't paid. There is a machine here which appears to be some vacuum thingamajiggy. What on earth do these... Be careful, that might be a colon cleanser. Huh? Women do to themselves. That's a hot wax thing. I don't really know if that's something I want to Why seize. Not? Why not? She sees everything. As far as I'm concerned, it all goes. 
than someone else come and value it. We're not experts. and uh... Definitely not. As the agents are unsure of the value of the assets, they will have to seize most of the equipment to be sure of covering the £10,000 debt. But then a man appears. Is this supposed to be a solicitor or something? Or somebody who they, who claims to be renting out the equipment? Right, right. 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 sir. This company is coming to the... Right, sir. Well, Calm yeah. down, sir. Yes, sir. He immediately attempts to shut the agents in the treatment room. No, no, no. No, no. no. So you're blocking, you're blocking the door. Moment. So this, you're, you're coming sir, for the wrong This my, my advice. Too. Sir, you've come you in, your, your temper's up here, sir. You're standing in front of the door, okay. blocking it. For which company you coming? Show the documents. I show, I say. Yes. Sir, due to the Data Protection Act, okay. we can't speak to you about this matter. Okay. okay. I'm uh, Rezanta's husband. She so, coming. Can you excuse me, no, sir? Can you move out the way? Sir, move and let my colleague. Okay. Thank you. Renata's husband, Staz, decides to let Dell go, leaving Max on his own. No, no don't close the door. Right, well, if you do that, mate, it's obstruction and you'll be arrested. Do you... Go outside, Sorry? Go outside, don't you? Go outside? Yeah, I'm not going to be going outside. outside. I'm going as well. Maybe you send the took that stuff in there, your pockets. Sir, you can go outside yeah, and I'm chill out. Outside. Yeah, you I'm, do I'm that. Waiting. Don't touch yeah, my I'm, colleague. I'm with you. Okay? I need to talk to you. Right. When family friends turn up, yeah, he didn't turn up. He didn't turn up and made the whole situation more volatile. Dale was already not going for it. He wants to seize everything. Now you're just making it worse. Now he's probably gonna stand on it. Maybe not. Thinking but. that they're a knight in shining armor, this can really hinder the enforcement process because they've already got this idea in their head that they're not gonna pay, and they put up a barricade to try and stop us. I think a lot of people don't remember that we're commanded by the High Court. They need to pay this, otherwise we need to physically remove assets. Minutes later, Renata finally arrives. Hello. Hello. Well, my name is Renata, if you need to see my ID. No, that's fine. Okay. Well, uh, basically, I would like to find out what's happening. Okay. Because this is Amber Beauty Limited. Okay. And uh, how did you link it to Amber uh, Therapy Suite at the moment? Well, this was in the top drawer. Okay. We got it off our accountant. We've got the same accountant as with Amber Therapy Suite. It's just an awful coincidence. If it's your accountant, mm -hmm. right, why would you have an accountant for a business you don't own? What do you mean for business? Well, why have know? you got an accountant? I've, I've got an accountant for my own business. What? So we are now establishing that you're no longer a manager. You own this business. Under pressure, Renata has let her guard down and admitted she's oh, more Renata. than just a manager. But she's still claiming that her company... It's harder to lie than you think. You be forgetting your lie. Penny isn't the one on the writ. Max investigates further. What I would like to see is verifiable receipts for assets Okay, in this that room. can be sent to you. It's not a problem. I can get them what, what, tomorrow. Uh, what's going to happen now, madam, if you can't produce that? Um, we will have to now remove these goods. Yeah, yeah, Renata. The jig is up. <laughs> We're not waiting for you tomorrow. We want it today. You hear me? For sale at public auction. When you're dealing with letters that, for want of a better word, are telling you lies, you need to break down each lie as it comes, show them, and display the fact that they're lying. They realise the game's up. With Renata unable to prove her claims, the agents now have to get this case resolved one way or another. Max starts removing equipment from the treatment room. Yes, her husband going yes. black or no? But with her business now at serious risk, Renata finally starts to negotiate. Okay, and take it to the court. The goods, can any chance I could give you like a small amount today? How so much? We can, um, let's say 500. No. Before, well, I don't, do, you, do you expect me to have 10,000 in my bag? No, but you might have it in your bank. I can we give you today 500 until we sort everything out. No. How about 5,000? Can you give me 5,000? Of course I cannot give you 5,000. Okay. Can we try 2,000? I mean, can, can, can we try 2,000? But please, obviously, no, 2,000 is maximum. But it's a 2,000? If you can get me 4,000 pounds, we can work something out. 3,000. It's possible uh, to get. I'm not allowed. I mean, I don't I have, have I have the call the friends, maybe some the. Do for the 3,000. 
You do me three and a half. We'll wrap this up. You'll go home. I'll go home. Go to court. Go, go sort it out. Thousand. Okay, I'm going for the court. For the neighbors. <laughs> Your neighbors Despite Renata's initial claim that she there? wasn't responsible for the debt, her husband successfully arranges the three and a half thousand pounds the agents have asked for. Three thousand five hundred. Yeah. The goods listed on the inventory will stay in place for now. But if Renata fails to pay the rest of the money within fourteen days, the agents will be back to seize them. Okay. Right. We're done here. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. What's twice? Hey, they really do be pressing the issue, brother. They came in there. They all oh, that business. We're not the business. I'm just an employee. Changed up to giving thirty five hundred. Please, after all the innocence pleading, they've parted with a significant amount of money. You, why would you do that? That's a lot of money to pay. Long day, time to go home. Max and Dell's case is settled for now. But in Max and Paul's next case, they meet a debtor. According to a recent survey, the number of people in the UK concerned about their personal us. finances has reached its highest level in the last three years. <clears throat> Worried over rising inflation coupled with low wages, one in five adults believe their financial situation will get worse over the next six months. Not me, I always keep hope alive. Last year, someone sought advice from a leading debt charity for every 53 seconds. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Max Carraher are in Wandsworth, South West London, to collect a debt of eight thousand pounds. Ain't this the town where that lady prisoner was getting her cheeks beat down by a, a, a by a, a the guard was getting her cheeks beat down by a prisoner? Ain't this it, Wandsworth? And she was decent. That's crazy. She could have anybody, but she just rather put her whole life, throw her whole life away. That's stupid. <clears throat> Shout out to the man them though for getting it done in there. <laughs> Owed to a firm of financial advisors by a film producer. And we're looking to collect eight thousand two hundred and fourteen pounds and forty five pence. But this isn't the first time Paul has come across the debtor, Stephen Brown. I believe this gentleman is known to you. Yeah, we have got a history with him. We evicted him from a flat before, and the rent arrears were over 30 grand. So he works in television. Did y'all collect the money? Yeah, he's a producer. Yeah, yeah, he is. There are repeat offenders, and if we've already established a relationship with them, there's no reason not to continue that relationship. It makes it easier. They know what my parameters are, they know the rules, so they either can pay or they can't pay. Talk's a good talk, but yeah. doesn't cook with any money. The address on the writ is a penthouse apartment in a prime riverside development. Oh, no, he got money. You got to give it up, butter. What are we looking for? Penthouse, top floor. I don't want to hear a, a thing. <laughs> ah. Steven, how are you, sir? Hello, hey. sir. Come on upstairs. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you again. A little duplex. Stephen is keen to tell Paul how the debt came about. It's a service and I cancel it after two months. It's five thousand a year. After I found out that their advice was terrible, I cancelled it. That's all it is. Tax advisor. Yeah. Right. I didn't get anything for it. And I cancelled it after two months, Paul. Yeah. And they billed me for the whole year. Wow. But it seems this oh, eight thousand nice. debt is only the tip of the Yeah, bro got a uh is that a hot tub? The iceberg. I'm about four hundred thousand pounds in debt. What's gone wrong with your life? 
started out over there. Remember my wife? Mm. Divorce, whole nightmare. She's back in America. I've got the boys. Uh, the boys live here? Yes, they live with me. Single father. It's, um, it just. I feel you, my brother. I feel you. Me too. Collapsed. It ain't collapsed. It's clear though, that I, 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 would, I, would, I wasn't married. <laughs> Stephen's finances have gone into meltdown. In 1993, on the Securities Exchange Commission, I took my company public. I made over a hundred million dollars. What did you do? 21 years ago. I got married 19 years ago. I bought multi-million dollar homes, basketball players in Pacific Palisades, California, homes in Hawaii, everything. And I lost it all because of marriage to a crazy woman. I get myself... Now, nah, brother, I'm going to tell you one thing right here, right now. 21 years ago, right? You had too much emotion. Too, way too much emotion. You should have never settled down. You should have got that money. Did you for 10 years. And then started to figure it out. Because at that point, you had money. You knew the type of woman was that was coming for you. You knew what was going down. And you would have been smarter. She got you for everything, is what it sounds like, buddy. That's tough. Sister to send me a hundred dollars. Then left you with the kids so she can go live the single woman life. A month from Canada to keep our food going until I either sell a show or I I'm done. Nightmare. Nightmare. What's the rent on this property a month? Eleven thousand five hundred pounds a month. Yeah. So I'm not being rude, but surely you got money. living outside of means if all these problems are, are arising. It wasn't when I moved in a okay. year ago. It yeah. was not. Circumstances change. Some defendants have earned huge salaries in the past and then lost it, but they haven't changed their lifestyle accordingly. It can have such a devastating... See, that's why I be living below my means. You know what I'm saying? No matter how much money I get, if it's just me and my daughter, I will live like it's just me and my daughter. <laughs> ain't going to be a guest room. Ain't going to be more than one car. Maybe two cars. I'm not doing none of that. Because at any moment, especially in 2024, you can get canceled. And you can lose it all. Now, don't get me wrong. Am I going to have money invested? Absolutely. I make moves where the residuals will always come in, but like, I, I, I've i never been one to live above my means. I'll probably get fresh, though. Now, I will be dressing nice. Other than that, you have a nice apartment, make it look real good, or maybe a condo. I'll probably buy a condo, so it can always be mine, you know what I'm saying? Or a house. Just buy a house. <laughs> buy a house get it done. You know what I'm saying? And then, that's it though. Because of the house, I can rent it out at any time. You know what I'm saying? It's over. I'm buying a house cash up front though. No payment. I'll just pay the the uh, the land tax, whatever it is. Dating effect on the landlords, the suppliers, the small business owners who they owe money to. I suppose it gives me more motivation to collect for the claimant. Despite Stephen's circumstances, the agents need to get this case resolved one way or another. I'll take you, you're not working at the moment then. No, I'm not. I'm just writing television shows and trying to pitch for what I'm doing. I'm trying to beat the clock. Did you know in the entertainment business, I can, on one deal, pay all my bills off. I mean, I own the rights to the old Western uh, Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly, High Noon. And I have Bruce Willis committing to the movie. My friend Stephen D'Souza wrote all the Die Hard movies for Bruce, is writing the script as we speak. If he can get it finished in the next few weeks, which he thinks he can, I will then get a million, two million, three advance. I'll be buying you a beer. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Yeah, we already got the lowdown on you, buddy. Talk's a good talk, but never pays. But the agents can't wait for one of Stephen's deals to come through. I want to search for any assets to remove. 
With payments looking unlikely, the agents must look around the penthouse for any items of value they could seize. I don't own a single thing in here, except my one work computer yep. and my kids' one computer for school. Okay. Well, what you mean, you should not be single? That's it. But Max is skeptical and begins a thorough search. There's lots of designer goods, all of which will be seized. What's the new value of all this stuff? Huge amount of money. There are thousands of pounds worth of luxury goods in the flat. I know how much they're worth. They're new. Oh, probably worth the debt. The designer bags alone could fetch up to three thousand oh, pounds yeah. at public auction. Oh, yeah. Sunglasses, bags, you name That's it. That's my wife. You'd have to prove that with receipts. You oh, ain't got no wife, do you? Despite yeah, Stephen's way. claims, the agents suspect he originally bought the goods. If he can't find evidence to the contrary, they could be seized. But just when the agents think they may have struck gold, Stephen drops a bombshell. I have three bankruptcy petitions totaling quarter of a million. I have documents here. If we are about to enforce a writ of control, and bankruptcy or liquidation are mentioned, if these two things are genuinely in progress, we would be wasting our time in trying to enforce the writ of control. Because any monies that we were able to recover through these routes would be remitted directly to the official receiver or to the liquidator. Paul calls Stephen's legal representative to verify his story about the bankruptcy. What I'm trying to establish with, with Mr. Brown is, is he actually bankrupt at this point, or is there an actual application to make him bankrupt in place? Do you know of that? He's not bankrupt. Thank you very much. Preset, thank you, bye. And we continue. It seems that Stephen hasn't been declared bankrupt after all. As the, the agent suspects hard, that he purchased the expensive designer goods, they can remove them unless he can prove otherwise. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for your hospitality. But with Stephen still liable for any remaining balance after the auction, the agents will be back. Thanks very much. Take care, Take care Mr. Brown. Bye -bye. That handbag looks... Very good on you. Yeah. yeah, actually taking stuff. Well, that was a different one, wasn't it? Absolutely amazing. Bro's out here living an amazingly broke life. That's what's hard in them type of industries, though. Music industry, TV industry, entertainment industry. Ups and downs. In 2016, over 80,000 people under the age of 25 contacted a leading UK charity to seek help with their debts. Last year, the average amount owed stood at nearly £6,000, a 20% increase in just two years. It's 6 a.m. Paul Bowhill and Gary Brown are in Rochester, Kent. Well, what have you got this morning, Gary? Cold and miserable. Um, got a Mr. Corey Nixon. Corey owes over £2,000 to a garage for unpaid car repairs. The address is in a small village in the Kent marshes. This is Cliff. Is it quite remote, is it? It is, yeah. It's actually yes. out on the marshes. Nice look, very spooky. You ever seen the film Great Expectations? No. It's all filmed up. I don't think Dickens, so. All the mist rolling over and all that. All right, catch around the corner. Yes, yeah, that one up there, look. As the agents arrive at the house, they spot several vehicles parked outside. If any of them belong to Corey, they could be seized if he can't or won't pay. One of the kids has just told the mum. Someone's at the door, so I imagine someone will be down soon. If we can get there early in the morning, there are two dynamics that work every time. First, you find them there. Second, they're more likely to open the door, and then you can address the situation immediately. 
Hello there, can I speak to Corey Nixon, please? He's, just, he's not here, he's in the hospital. Okay. Right, okay. Um, that, it's a legal matter that's ongoing. I need to speak to him so I can tell him what it's about. Can I speak to him, please? Can you give him a call? No, I, no, I can't because I can't, I'm not being funny. You haven't turned around and told me what it's for. There's only so much information I can one. give you because of data protection. He right, would need to. That. He would need to authorise me. I can get him to give you a call. Okay. I can do. If you want to give me a phone number, I can get it. Can I, I need to speak to him now, though. Pardon? I need to speak to him now. Well, yeah, I'll give him a call. Mom, lying. Well, can I shut my door, please? Because I'm um, getting all my I'm, out. I need to come I'm, in then. No, no, you don't need to come in. Look, can you please get out and I will ring because my phone is upstairs. You're letting my cold, the cold air in my house. If, then if you let me in, you can close no. the door. The agents enter the house, but they're in for a surprise. What's the surprise? Yeah. Apparently these men say you are money. Oh, so he's not in hospital. Corey's at home. Obviously. Well then, do you want to come down? W mom though. Upstairs <clears throat> and I'll explain what this is about. The debtor, Corey, is at home after all. Can I come down and arrest him? They're going to arrest you. We're not. We're not going to arrest him. We're not police officers. He's nine. He's nineteen years old. Fine. He doesn't owe no money to. Corey, do you want to speak to me in here? I'll explain what they this is all about. They won't talk to me, even though I'm your mum. I don't mind explaining to your mum, Corey, but I'd need your permission to discuss the case because of data protection. Here's my ID. They've taken you to court by way of a CCJ, but then they've escalated the case to the High Court for enforcement purposes. How can you go to court? If they've Put done the court it online, sends out letters. he's not had no letters though, this is the thing. The only let, seriously, the only letters he's had is, 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 is bank, Be -be between, between the time it's taken to court and now, uh, there's probably been about four or five letters. They've taken you to court for some reason, so ultimately we need to collect £2,149.91. What, today? Yeah. I don't even have... I accept, I accept that he's... How old, how old do you call him? 19. 19. Okay. I you accept that he's 19. Grand? I cannot find two grand. Do you not think what this is about at all? No, I, all my stuff is paid by my ah, stuff. It's something to do with that 04 plate car on the driveway because they've given that registration to us. So whether you've had some work done to the car, how would they know that car unless, you, unless it's yours? It's not mine, I can't drive. Right, well, this is in your name. Did your mom put something in your name that she wasn't supposed to? So otherwise, how would they have that registration for the car? And is that a hole in the ceiling? Right, well, but it's involved in the case somehow. So maybe some work has been done to the car and they have lent the money right. to allow that work to be done, but it's in his name. Something tells me you know you know what this is about. L mom. Dang, I said W mom, now I'm switching it to L mom. Yeah, I do. You remember when the, the clutch went on the car? The, gear, the gearbox was rebuilt. Yeah, you do, because I'm sure they gave me the bank cards. And they were meant to take £300 per month out of your bank, and they never took a payment out of that bank. Right, that well. bank account. It seems that without him knowing, Kerry used her son's bank card to get repairs done to the car. You just messed up your kid's credit. That's definitely Elmar. But the garage was unable to take payments from his account. Now that you're satisfied that this is a legitimate case, I'm telling you I need the money. Otherwise, I'm going to stay the case to a higher is stage of no enforcement. Is there no money you can give me no. until 9 o'clock? No. Just try and get this money. I need, need to get my girls to school. I'm, a fr I'm here now, and it needs to be paid. So, by all means, Corey, this is your debt. I mean... I can't, I can't tell you, Mummy, you need to pay it because it's not her debt. She, you're the one that's legally responsible. I've got no way of doing it. I'm a single mum to four kids. Kerry gets her father on the phone. Dad, I need to find two grand within five minutes. Right, would you, do you know what? Forget it, yeah? It's not... Don't get mad at your dad. You did it. My problem is some... It is your problem. Somebody else's problem that I'm sorting out. Corey's. Oh, the agent. still blaming it on her son. That, yeah, that's Elmar. Visit is causing shockwaves in the family. 
With tempers fraying, will the agents ever get the £2,000 they came for? That's like your mom taking out the... High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bill and your Gary name Brown and you were in Cliff, near Rochester in Kent. To recover a debt of over £2,000 owed to a garage by 19-year-old Corey Nixon. One of the kids just told the mum, I imagine someone will be down soon. The debtor's mother, Kerry, at first lied to the agents. He's, just, he's not here, he's in hospital. But then Corey appeared and claimed to know nothing about the debt. It's something to do with that 04 plate car on the driveway. It's not mine. I can't drive. Kerry called her dad. Dad, I need to find two grand within five minutes. It's not my problem. It's somebody else's problem that I'm sorting out. Corey's. But he was unable to help. Seriously, forget it. Now, the agent's only option is to seize goods to offset the debt. Gary turns his attention to the car, which led to the dispute. OK, I need to see proof for the vehicles. Start with the car that's on the driveway, the, the, um, the 04 plate. Oh, actually, in my logbook from from Kerjo, I've sat in Kerjo. Mm -hmm. Love, but don't worry. Things, these documents wouldn't be enough because, as it says there, this document is not proof not of ownership. ownership. Yeah, that's the name of the registered Register keeper. keeper. For this ownership. document so, is not proof of ownership. How, 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 need, how more do you want me to show it? I'd need the bills of sale or the sales invoices when they were bought. While Kerry looks for the bills of sale, Gary goes outside to inspect the car. Looks like they might have to take Peugeot one of these. Sign. Oh, look at that. That's is, subwoofer? Is this a car that a middle-aged woman drives? I don't think so. The client has supplied details of this car. She's trying to say that it's hers. He's saying he doesn't drive. Looking at a car like this, it certainly looks like a young lad's driving it. It does, but... With no proof that the car doesn't belong to Corey, Gary hopes the threat of seizing it will prompt an offer of payment. Based on the, the information that client has given us, it, this is to do with that car, so that's going to be the first thing that goes. But how... Um, this, this is the thing, you're taking something from me that is needed for my everyday life. You should have thought about that, what it comes down to if that's, the money isn't paid. <laughs> that's rough. Then we'll remove oh. goods. With no payment in sight, the agents need so to set a deadline and make the family his... aware that removing goods incurs extra fees. At 7 o'clock, the debt is going to go up to £2,800. How much? £2,800. And 31 pence. It's 5 to 7. Is there no way that I can, I can try and sort something out with you? With how much, how much can you get now? Because... I, I can ask my friend if he can help me out with a grant. And then I can make some sort of agreement with you. OK. Agreement or work? Grand, then I'll set up an arrangement. Um, but the arrangement will be against the car. Yeah, no, that's fine. And goods in the house. Gary has offered the family a lifeline. £1,000 now, and the balance paid off within one day. Kerry phones a friend for help. Josh, I'm so sorry to ring you. Do you help me out with a thousand pound and I will sort that out with you today? The way I'll she's saying it is so me. light. It stops them from taking my car and everything. Are you sure? Kerry's friend comes to the rescue. W oh, friend, hell mom. Now, he makes a part payment of a thousand pounds. W son. But Corey is still responsible for the remaining debt and Gary lists the car as collateral if the outstanding balance is not paid within 24 hours. Right, so this is a control goods agreement, which means I have control of the car. It does mean that we have the authority to force entry into the property if, if nobody answers, but hopefully it's not going to come to that, OK? The agents have got the best result they can for now, but if the balance of £1,150 isn't paid within the deadline, they will be back for the car. Standard, standard visit. <laughs> you expect the lies, you expect the deceit. We got a result, and the other half of the result. Mom was lying from the jump, from the front door. Oh, well, 
be on its way later on today. It's, um, it's an unfortunate situation for people concerned, but pay your bills. Boy had no remorse, didn't he? The balance, of course, that was set up, okay. Kept up with the, oh wow. I really thought there was no chance. Order of the day. Wait, what was the agents returned to Amber Therapy three weeks later. Renata had left the business and had illegally sold the seized goods to a co worker. Mm. The assets were sold at auction to pay off a debt. That's an L friend, an L co-worker. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.